Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to all of our witnesses today for helping us gain a fuller understanding of this absolute uh, horror uh, that is going on and victimizing uh, far too many people, and uh, particularly young people. Uh, listening to the testimony, I, you know, it seems to me there are a few facets uh, of the uh, approach we can take to addressing this problem. Uh, and, uh, I, and that starts uh, with just increased public awareness, that all of us have a responsibility uh, and a role we can play uh, working with nonprofits, working with law enforcement, working with other stakeholders in our community uh, to, in order to uh, help people uh, not become victims and also uh, to raise awareness about the political dimensions of the problem. In my state of California, for example, uh, for many years, uh, we've tried in the legislature to get the legislature to take this issue more seriously by classifying uh, human trafficking as a serious felony. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, every year, the Public Safety Committee has stopped it from passing, and they did that this year as well, uh, a bill to make uh, tra trafficking of a minor a serious felony, but after a public uh, outcry, uh, they ended up doing something I think unprecedented in recent history, is the committee reversed itself and just a couple days ago, that bill passed uh, the State Assembly unanimously and is now going uh, to the governor's desk. So I think that is a testament uh, to the, uh, the power of public awareness. But beyond that, there seem to be uh, you know, three main uh, facets of the solutions that we need to be working on with great urgency and doing everything we can. The first uh, being holding uh, those who peddle uh, this material and those who traffic young people accountable. Uh, you know, the second being uh, the uh, social media uh, element, and the third being uh, what's going on at the border. So uh, on the first, Mr. Rousseau, you've uh, mentioned in your testimony that we need to have uh, stricter penalties uh, for the abusers. What do you think would be the specific changes that would be most uh, important? It's a great question, and I'll, I'll note one in California. It's great that they've moved that legislation forward. The idea of being supportive of victims is not incompatible with the idea of being harder on traffickers, and we need to be balancing that appropriately. One approach that our organization is focused on is looking at things such that already exist in the law, like gang enhancements, and applying them for human traffickers who coerce minors into other criminal behavior. Oftentimes, you can't make that connect that straight gang connection, so that enhancement may not be available, but if you're an individual who forces a 16-year-old into prostitution or a 15-year-old into trafficking fentanyl or other drugs, that penalty increase, that gang enhancement that exists in the law, should be eligible for you regardless of whether you're in a criminal organization or not. So that's something I would ask that, that the committee consider, is that focusing on actually enhancing for folks who are using that coercive element, let's make the game harder for the traffickers that they're already playing. Thank you, that's a, that's a great insight. And Ms. Basham, when it comes to the immigration uh, facet, you testified that from March through May of this year, more than 33,000 unaccompanied children crossed the U.S. border. The physical and sexual violence, human degradation, hunger and thirst that these children often experience en route to the United States is appalling. Sadly, you go on, this is just a prelude to the violence that many experience once they're in the US. Uh, so why do you think it is that we have had this uh, huge increase in the number of unaccompanied minors and how do we stop it from happening? What are the steps that we should be taking right now? Well, there are several things I think that, um, I'm, I'm not gonna dive into specific border policy on what we can do now, but I will say that um, there are several things for deterrence purposes. First of all, in Guatemala, that was the country that I brought up early on. I actually went there last year, spoke there. The Secretary of Sexual Trafficking is on my task force. And one of the things that they're doing, she said, we want this to stop. They have 47% of unaccompanied minors are coming from Guatemala. And the problem is, she said, that a lot of these mothers are handing over their children to smugglers because they do not know. And so what, they're do, what they've actually done there is they've developed mobile units. And so I think that one thing that I would suggest, and this is a little bit out, you know, out of um, sort of the scope of some of this, is a CODEL. I actually think it would be really, really helpful to do a CODEL down to Guatemala to actually see some of this and talk to some of these people in person because I do think if there was increased funding or things like that for them to get mobile education units into these places, that it would actually be extremely helpful to some of these um, children from a prevention standpoint alone. That's one country in Guatemala. Um, outside of that, and then again, that gets to an awareness campaign, which is which is really central to a lot of this. Um, outside of that, I really think it comes down to also the communication between uh, children here and their parents back there. That's one of the things that wasn't really discussed much today, but um, there needs to be a really clear, good communication loop so that children who are unaccompanied here mm -hmm. can communicate back with their parents there because if more parents knew of the dangers that their kids would face, they would not send them. 
Thank you very much. And with your indulgence, Mr. Chair, if I could just quickly ask Mr. Pizzurro, of the laws that you listed for holding social media companies accountable, what do you think is the most important change to make them more proactive uh, in making sure that this material isn't disseminated on their platforms? Time has expired, but you may answer. Okay, uh, man, they need to be mandated, and they definitely, from a, from a standpoint of just, if we can just get them to standardize what they give and be a little bit more proactive, you know, we're looking for incremental changes. There's a lot of changes that need to be done, but that's where we need to at least start. Thank you very much. Chair, recognizes the gentlelady from 